What's up guys? In this video, we got to calculate the dot product for A and B for each of these four scenarios here. And we got to leave our answer in exact values if possible. And then all of these status here, they represent the angle between vectors A and B. So let's start off with part A here. Now we know that the dot product between two vectors, what's one way to calculate it? Well, it's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos of that angle in between. So notice for part A, we are given all of these expressions here. So we can just simply plug all of this in to that formula. So the magnitude of A is three, magnitude of B is seven, and then we got uh, this angle third degree, so cos, of 30. And then we just multiply these. Now we're supposed to leave our answer in exact values if possible. Notice that 30, that is a special angle. So if you remember your special triangles, we got 30 here, that's going to be root 3, 1, 2. So what's cos of 30 going to be? It's going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2. So it's 3 times 7, times root three, and then this is gonna be all over two. You can multiply the three and the seven, so we've got 21 root three over two. So that is the answer to part A. So uh, for part A, A dot B equals 21 root three over two. What about part B? So we got vector A, which is negative three, negative seven, and two. We got the components of it. The magnitude of vector B is three, and then the angle in between them is 110. So we're gonna be using this formula again, but one different thing here is that we're not given the magnitude of vector A. We're just given it in component form. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to figure out what the magnitude is first, and then we could plug it into that formula. So the magnitude of A, let's just do it down here. It's gonna be what? It's gonna be the square root of the sum of the square of all of these components. So negative three squared plus negative seven squared plus two squared. So this is gonna be 9, 49, that would be 58, plus four, that would be 62, square root of 62. So that's the magnitude of A, and now notice that uh, we can plug everything into the formula to find the dot product. So the magnitude of A, square root of 62, the magnitude of B is three, and then the angle in between is 110. So we got cos of 110. Now, unfortunately, 110 is not a special angle. So this dot product is going to be in uh, decimals. And when you do all that in your calculator, you end up getting negative 8.08. .08. So that there is the answer to part B. So A dot B equals negative 8.08. All right, moving on to part C. So we got vector A is a unit vector. The magnitude of B is five. The angle in between them is 225. So same formula. Now, if vector A is a unit vector, what does that mean? That means that the magnitude of A is one. And then we can just simply plug all of that into the formula. So the magnitude of A is one, magnitude of B is five, and then we got cos 225. Now 225, that is a special angle. If you remember, 225 is gonna be in this quadrant. What's the reference angle gonna be? It's gonna be 225 minus 180, which is 45. So then we got one, one, root two, actually this is negative one and negative one, 
right? Because it's in that third quadrant, the x values are negative, y values are negative. So what's cos of 225 in this case? Jason over hypotenuse, so negative one over root two. So we got one times five times negative one over root two. When you multiply all of these out, this one is like over one, this five is over one. So multiplying all the numerators, all the denominators, we end up with negative five over root two. Now, you can also rationalize this if you want. So instead of having that radical in the denominator, you could bring it up to the numerator. So negative five root two over root two times root two is two. So this answer and this answer are the same. So that is the answer to part C. That is the dot product between A and B. So dot product of A and B. Let's write down this answer. So negative five root two over two. And then finally, part D, magnitude of A is two. Vector B is negative four, two and five. It's in component form then the angle in between them is 90. Now, with this question, your first uh, instinct, kind of similar to part B, might be to get the magnitude of B. So we could plug it into this formula. But notice that the angle is 90 degrees. And what's cos of 90? If you remember, the cos graph looks like that. And at 90 degrees, cos is zero. This is the cos graph. So no matter what the magnitude of B is gonna be, we know cos of 90 is gonna be zero, which is gonna make that entire right side of zero. So we can just simply say, because that angle is 90 degrees, because those vectors are perpendicular to each other, the dot product between these two vectors is going to be zero. We don't have to waste time in getting that magnitude of B. Now, I want to uh, point out also here that another angle that makes this dot product zero is 270. Because notice that 270 cos is zero as well. So cos of 270 would be zero, which would make the dot product zero. So if this angle is 270 degrees, so whenever you see 90 degrees or 270 degrees, dot product between those two vectors is always gonna be zero. And that makes sense because if we draw uh, these two vectors with an angle of 90 degrees in between them, so let's say this is vector A, this is vector B, Notice that this angle is 90 degrees. Well, what's this angle in between them? It's 270 degrees, right? So either way, both of these angles in between the vectors is the same, which then makes sense that their dot product would be the same. So cos of 90 is the same as cos of 270. The dot product between two perpendicular vectors is going to be zero.